Welcome back to another timing system installation video by Cloys. I'm Cody Smith, and today we're demonstrating timing system removal and installation in Ford 5 liter Coyote engines. This video will cover time and chain installation in 2011 to 2014 Ford F-150 and 2011 to 2023 Mustang 5 liter V8 engines. Only engines with the 1548-6372 firing order. 2015 and later F-150 engines have an alternate firing order and timing procedure that we will cover in a different video. Ford made changes to the primary chains and sprockets and the primary tensioners starting with the 2015 year models. Despite the slight decrease in chain width, the systems are otherwise identical. For our demonstration today, we are utilizing a Cloys 9-0510S timing kit for the earlier 2011 to 2014 year models. No matter if your application uses this kit or the later 9-0757S version, the Cloys kit will contain the primary and secondary chains, all chain guides, the primary and secondary chain tensioners, and an upgraded chromoly steel crankshaft sprocket. Both kits are available without the crankshaft sprocket by adding an X to the end of the part numbers. To view all the current Cloys kit offerings, confirm which kit is correct for your vehicle, and find additional product information, please visit our parts finder at cloys.com. The timing components can be serviced with the engine in the vehicle. You will need to remove the valve covers and the front engine cover to access and service the components. It's also highly recommended to remove the spark plugs to make it easier to rotate the engine. You'll need to do some manual engine rotation during this procedure. Once the components are visible, rotate the engine until the crankshaft key is at 12 o'clock and the R timing mark on the right hand exhaust phaser is up. If your crank key is at 12 and your exhaust mark is not up, rotate the crankshaft one full revolution and check again. This is the ideal position to start disassembly. Don't worry about which stroke the engine is on. This procedure ensures you're in the correct position to begin service. Just remember throughout the process that timing is set by aligning the marked chain links to the marked sprocket teeth. Specific shaft locations are not critical because all sprockets are indexed to their respective shafts. Start the disassembly by removing the right hand primary chain tensioner. Then the tensioner guide followed by the right hand chain guide and the chain. You can slightly rotate the crankshaft to shift chain slack as necessary. Be aware that once the primary chain is removed, the camshafts may jump clockwise or counterclockwise due to the valve spring pressures. This is completely normal. In fact, if the cams do not move, use a wrench or a quality set of adjustable pliers on the flats of one of the camshafts and attempt to rotate. What you're looking for is a spot where the cams are at rest, where no valves are open and no valve spring pressures are attempting to rotate the cams. You will find that the cams are either in a resting position already or they will jump to a resting position with little to no effort. Once you have confirmed the cams are at rest, remove the camshaft phaser attachment bolts and gently start to work the phasers off of the cams. Turn the secondary tensioner's upper contact surface clockwise 90 degrees, then slip the phasers and secondary chain off of the cams. Place the phasers appropriately so you remember they are removed from the right hand bank. You can then remove the secondary chain tensioner and the secondary chain guide. Next, carefully remove the camshaft phaser oil screens from the camshafts. These will need to be cleaned and reinstalled before reassembly. You can now repeat this process on the left hand bank. Before we start the installation, there's a few things I need to address. The first is hardware. The camshaft phaser attachment bolts in Coyote engines are torque to yield bolts. They are intended for one time use only, so you should always source new bolts before starting this job. At the time of filming, Cloys does not offer the phasers or the bolts for this application. 
but check the Chloe's parts finder to see if they're available before you order parts. The other hardware topic involves the primary tensioners and their attachment bolts. Some early production engines used a tensioner with a cast iron housing that had thicker attachment points and utilized longer bolts than the OE redesigned aluminum housing replacements. You will need shorter metric six by 30 millimeter bolts to properly secure the updated design tensioners. Speaking of tensioners, let me quickly explain the activation and deactivation of the tensioners. The primary tensioners are activated simply by pulling the activation pin and can be easily deactivated by compressing the piston and reinserting the pin. The use of a vise can be helpful. The secondary tensioners, however, have a unique activation procedure and cannot be deactivated once activated. The tensioners come with a compression limiting clip which prevents premature activation. Once the tensioners are installed and the phasers and secondary chains are in place, you must make sure to compress and release the tensioners to properly activate. Failure to manually activate the secondary tensioners can lead to catastrophic engine failure once the secondary chains wear over time. Do not forget this step. Let's now begin the assembly process by properly timing the phasers and secondary chains. On both sets of phasers, the double marked links of the secondary chain straddle the mark on the intake phaser and the single marked link aligns to the mark on the exhaust phaser. Once properly timed, place the phasers and chain assemblies appropriately to avoid mixing up the left and right hand banks. Starting with the left hand bank, reinstall the cleaned oil supply screens into the nose of the camshafts. Install the secondary tensioner, then the guide. Once fully seated, remove the compression limiting clip, but be careful not to compress the tensioner yet. Next, install the left hand bank phasers and secondary chain. First, make sure the assembly is still properly timed, then carefully rotate the assembly, keeping the chain tightly engaged so the indexing dowels of the phasers properly align with the dowel features of the camshafts. Once aligned, slowly work the phasers onto the camshafts, making sure they properly engage and seat. Once seated, install an attachment bolt finger tight to keep the phaser in place. If needed, you can slightly rotate one of the camshafts to achieve proper engagement. Once the assembly is properly in place, use a wrench on the camshaft flat features, install all phaser attachment bolts, and torque to specification. Torque three bolt style phaser bolts to 11 foot pounds plus an additional 90 degrees. Later model single bolt style phaser bolts should be torqued to 30 foot pounds, loosen 360 degrees, then torque to 20 foot pounds plus an additional 150 degrees. If the flats are not accessible at this time, you can wait until the full timing system is installed and rotate the engine to properly position the cams to torque the bolts. Next, make sure the secondary chain is properly positioned within the ridges of the tensioner and the chain guide, then compress and release the tensioner to activate. Make sure you notice the internal spring start to function. Install the new crankshaft sprocket. You can now install the left hand primary chain. Align one mark chain link to the L mark on the exhaust phaser and place the other end of the chain over the inside row of teeth on the crankshaft sprocket. The goal here is to align the marked link to the marked tooth of the crankshaft sprocket. If the marks do not align, make note of the direction the crankshaft needs to rotate, move the chain out of the way, and rotate the crankshaft. Repeat this process until the mark chain link aligns to the mark tooth of the sprocket. Once the chain is aligned properly on both ends, install the chain guide, the tensioner guide, and the tensioner. Slight rotations of the crankshaft can be made to shift chain slack as necessary. The tensioner and guide attachment bolts torque to 89 inch pounds. Recheck the upper and lower timing marks and pull the tensioner's activation pin. Now let's repeat this process on the right hand bank. Install the oil supply screens, the secondary tensioner and guide, then the phaser and chain assembly. Don't forget to activate the secondary tensioner and torque the phaser attachment bolts to spec. Now install the right hand primary chain, aligning the upper marked link to the R mark on the exhaust phaser. Once again, rotate the crankshaft appropriately to align the lower timing marks. Make sure to rotate in the direction that will keep the marked link of the left hand chain 
close to or engaged with the crankshaft sprocket's marked tooth. Once aligned, install the chain guide, tensioner guide, and the tensioner, slightly shifting chain slack as necessary to install the components. Torque attachment bolts to 89 inch pounds, recheck the alignment of all the primary timing marks, then activate the right hand tensioner. You're now ready to reinstall the timing cover, valve covers, spark plugs, and the accessories. Please follow the proper procedures on applying gasket sealant to the appropriate areas of the engine for timing cover installation and torque all bolts appropriately. Like always, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please contact our tech line. And to stay up to date on all things cloys, including tech and product information, and more videos like this one, please sign up for Shopmasters at cloys.com.